I'm the Performance Director with the Guernsey Sports Commission and I work with the Education Department as well. Mental health and emotional well-being has always been something that's been very important to me, um, not just because of um, my own experiences but also with the people I work with. I work with um, young people, um, adults, people that are putting themselves into situations where they're trying to eke out every bit of performance that they can. Um, and that leads to um, stresses and tensions in different areas of their lives. So for me, both professionally and personally, it was a great opportunity. You know, as a young person growing up, um, I had a quite a challenging childhood. Um, and what I recognise more and more is that what I didn't do is talk to people as much as I should have done. Um, and I think that's a trap that lots of people can fall into, particularly men. Um, and I recognise that actually later in life, by actually starting to talk about things, it, it makes things more normal, it makes it okay, and you actually get more support than what you first first think you, you will. Yeah, and I suppose what I've seen more and more is that actually when we see a lack of performance, be it in a sporting arena, in an educational environment, or a business setting, or in people's personal lives, it's actually rarely due to any sort of technical breakdown. It's more in some sense there, their, their basic needs not being met in some sort of way, whether that's you know emotionally, physically, um, and I think we need to dig a bit deeper sometimes when we see underperformance or people being unhappy and think, well, what is actually really behind it rather than a surface level um, performance. I think the language we use is is really important. I think um, you know I think where people have, have seen to have, a, have any sort of mental weakness, you you know, you'll get language like people saying they've gone a bit cuckoo or a bit do lally and you know all it's all you know and, and we kind of attach very negative words to it which we wouldn't do to the common cold or someone having flu or measles or chicken pox or something. I think in an island of sixty five thousand people, whether you're in a business, you're in schools, you're in sport, your most valuable resource here is your people. You know, it's not that you've got people, the high turnover of people, you can't you know, if you work in the civil service and, and someone's underperforming you can't just fire them because they end up going to, they have to do another job in the island. Um, so I think we have a, a genuine responsibility to make sure we develop our community, our people, um, and support them and recognise that the, the population of Guernsey is its most valuable resource. Yeah. Um, I recognise definitely the challenges of being in Guernsey, um, that there is a there's a closeness there's a there's a overlap where people's personal lives in, integrate with their business lives and their private lives in a way that wouldn't happen in other places if if you you are feeling not yourself whatever not yourself m might feel like um and and it's probably difficult to recognize that at times is is to make sure that you you do talk to someone and and whether whoever that is i think the process of sharing it is hugely powerful. I think only only the philosophy that more and more what I've recognised is is the value of people. We have a we have a responsibility to grow the people on our island, not to not to hire and fire.